I love the Chapel Middle School students. It is so great to have you today. My name, my name is not important. What is important is that you know that everything we do here at the chapel is to help you move one step closer to God and each other through Jesus Christ. We are so glad you are here today. We have a special preacher. His name is Pastor Eric, Pastor Eric Laporta. He's fantastic. And of course, of course we need to begin with the Chapel Middle School Game of the Week. What kind of week would this be without that? But first, we want you to hear from an interview that Ken Rawson made with Pastor Eric months ago, just when all this COVID began. I hope you enjoy it, and then I hope you will appreciate Eric's message to you in your home. Hey everybody, welcome to Five Excellent Facts with Pastor Eric. Pastor Eric, we're so glad that you are here, man. What's going on? Hey, thank you so much. Well, I'm in my closet. This is where I hang out now. I have my office in my closet because I'm trying to escape my kids. And uh, before we jump into this, first of all, thanks for having me on, Ken. And second of all, man, just thinking a lot about you guys, middle school students, all students. Um, man, I, I can't imagine what you're going through. I know I am happy and sad all at the same time. I imagine you probably are too. Uh, you're probably happy that you don't have to go back to school, but deep down, you're probably sad too, missing out on friends, your teachers, um, extracurricular activities. Uh, I just want to let you know, I want you to hang in there and I'm grateful that you are joining us. It shows us that you really care about your spiritual life and you're trying to grow in that amidst all the other things you have to do. So thank you for tuning in. I can't wait to see you in person sometime soon. That's awesome, man. Thank you. All right, question number one, tell us about your family. Yeah, so I have four kids. I have a two-year-old daughter, a four-year-old daughter, a five-year-old son, and a eight-year-old son, almost eight, seven. So, so can you imagine being quarantined with four kids, seven and under? It Dude, is crazy. And that I feel would be insane. Fun. It is insane. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'm beating my boys in basketball more than I ever have before, and that is amazing. Uh, my wife, Paula, she's a saint. She is dealing with all of the kids, plus the big kid in me. I'm 34, but I act seven a lot of times. Uh, but that's my family, and, and uh, yeah, we're doing pretty well. That's awesome, man. Question number two, if you could combine two different animals to form a super animal, what animals, what would those two animals be? And what would the name of the animal be? Oh man, so I can't say Liger from Napoleon Dynamite, so he stole mine. Um, I, I love monkeys, so what would I combine a monkey with? Um, the first animal that came to mind is a seal. I don't know why. So I would call it uh, <laughs> a, 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 a mon seal. Uh, uh, seal key, something like that. How that sounds, that? That sounds like a Pokemon. Yeah, that's right. You would know. <laughs> Hudson, my seven-year-old loves Pokemon too. So yeah, I'm gonna go with a monkey and a seal. We're gonna call it a Mon Seal. Mon Seal. I love yes. it. I love it. Sure. Question number three: What were you like in middle school or high school? Oh man, I was not a good kid. It is funny. Um, when my teachers, middle school or high school, find out that I work at a church, they are very surprised. So in middle school and high school both, I was the funny guy. I tried to make everybody laugh. And uh, the reason I did that is because I was really insecure. So I really didn't like myself a lot. And because of that, uh, in order to feel like I was accepted, in order to feel like um, I fit in, I try to make people laugh. Uh, it never really worked because every time I made someone laugh, they would laugh and then kind of go on their own way. So they really didn't even stick by me. Mm. Probably the worst part of that though, Ken, is that I really 
hurt people in the process. Mm. I made, I was so insecure about myself and I didn't like myself that I had to tear other people down to make me feel good. And uh, it never worked. This is crazy. After I graduated, I was married at the time. I remember I was at Meyer grocery store. I was walking down the aisle and I was just looking randomly down the aisles to find something. And I saw a kid that I um, made fun of for uh, various reasons in high school. This is after I I came to know Jesus. And yet I walked past and I had this overwhelming feeling that I need to go and say, I'm sorry. So I, I, I was nervous because, you know, I haven't seen this guy in a while and I really hurt him in school. So I walked up to him and I said, Hey, and I said his name and, and you could tell he wasn't like thrilled to see me. And I said, look, I want you to know that I made fun of you in school. And the reason I did that is because I didn't like myself and I'm really sorry. And the look on his face, uh, I'll never forget that. And whether he accepted my apology or not, I don't know, but it made me feel good knowing that, um, I hurt somebody, but I also tried to do something about it. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for sharing that, man. That is, that is intense stuff. Thank you. Thank you for that, man. Thanks for being so vulnerable and and humble. That's some of the things I love about you so much, man. Thank you. Um, so, uh, thought for this next one, I would uh, share a video with you. So funny. That was my 10 seconds of fame. So we're at the Cavs game and with my buddy Jim and they're going around and they're saying, uh, they're putting people on the screen before the game. And I said, Jim, you should get your phone out because I'm going to get on the screen and we're way up high. And he's like, no way. I said, Jim, you got to trust me on this. So I find a cameraman. He's panning the audience and I'm pointing at him. And I just said, get it on me. And all of a sudden the camera turns and I'm watching right when it goes on me, I go crazy that you just saw. Well, here's the best part. Normally when these are on, uh, like the screen, they show somebody for like five seconds and then they go to the next person. Well, I was determined to stay on as long as I can. And so I was on there that whole time and I was just going nuts. And what you didn't see at the end was a little booty shake. Uh, (laughs) And so we filmed this thing. The whole place goes crazy. I'm walking around the stadium uh, or the arena, you know, getting something to eat, going to the bathroom, even when I left. And people were coming up to me, probably because I like had my cardigan sweater on. And they were saying, were you the guy on screen? So we're sitting there watching the game. And I told my buddy, I'm like, man, should I put this on social media? And he's like, you have to. And I said, yeah, but I have to go to church tomorrow. And if this gets on there, what are people gonna think? He's like, Eric, you gotta do it. So then I put it on there and it went viral. Uh, Man, I think at one point it got like 50,000 views. Um, It was so hilarious. The next day I went to church, I did announcements at church as I am doing that. People are yelling at me to dance in front of the church and I had to tell them no. (laughs) That's my most famous moment of my life right there. There you go. And you were our senior pastor. You were our co-lead pastor at the time. Yes. And that's why my wife, she was like, what are you doing? And honestly, one of the reasons I want on social media, I feel like sometimes being a pastor, you get viewed as someone out of touch with reality. And man, Jesus was so into reality. Like people wanted to be around him. People wanted to know what he was all about. And they didn't think he was out of touch. And so that's one of the things I try to do in my life is whether it's through laughter, through sports, through just being a regular guy, I just want people to see me as a regular dude who has a relationship with Jesus. And then hopefully over time, 
people are like, man, why, why is this guy different? And I get to share Christ with them and it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That is uh, definitely one of the things that makes you so great. Uh, you and Pastor Todd, is you just are who you are. You don't pretend to be anyone else. And I love that, man. I love that. Very for good fun. and for the bad. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Last question. Um, speaking about Jesus, man, when did when did following Jesus become real to you? I mean, you have attended the chapel since you were in high school. Um, how did you begin this faith journey? And when did it become yours? Yeah, so I uh, grew up in a divorced home. Um, and so my mom and dad, they got along. I know some of you um, are in a divorced home. Uh, sometimes your parents get along, other times they don't. So that's hard. And even though my parents got along well, man, I still was in a divorced family. And so it really was tough on me. Uh, combine that with, uh, like I told you before, try to always be the funny guy. You saw it in the video too. Um, but I just, when I was in middle school and high school, never went to church with my family. Christmas was about Santa. Easter was about the Easter bunny. Never talked about Jesus. Um, I just knew something was missing in my life. Like I, every time I would go through something in my life, even if it was a really good thing, at the end of the day, I, I would always ask myself, is this it? There's gotta be more to life. Mm. When I was um, about to enter uh, my senior year of high school, that nagging feeling of there has to be more overwhelmed me. And I was just sad all the time. Um, I had thoughts uh, of hurting myself. I, I never went through with it. Uh, and that's why if you are feeling that way, you need to talk to somebody. That's a big deal. Cause you don't have to live that way. And I thought to myself, do I have to live that way? And then uh, one of my friends invited me to youth group at the chapel in the same place that you go to youth group. And I sat in the same spots as you. And I went and God started to really reach out to me and say, hey, you don't have to live this way. Why don't you stop living um, for yourself? And why don't you follow me? And I did. And man, can it turn my life upside down. And since then my life has been harder than i've ever imagined um i almost lost a son when he was young mm. uh, my stepdad was killed in a motorcycle accident less than three years ago um i've gone through a lot of death a lot of uh, internal battles i battled depression and anxiety last year i'm in counseling for that right now um and i tell you that story because following jesus isn't easy and it doesn't guarantee um that life's going to be easy but what it does guarantee me is that he is with me and um i don't have to fear and uh, i have purpose beyond just living for myself and i'll tell you ken knowing that um no matter what i'm going through it, it's truly incredible so i challenge you middle school students even in the midst of what you're going through especially this time where it's just uncertain I would rather walk through this uncertainty knowing that I have a certain God who knows the future that I can hold his hand and just continue to journey with him no matter what happens. Man, that's awesome. And thank you for being a part of this thing. Thanks for sharing your story and life with us, man. We love you and, uh, and appreciate you. And Ken, can I just say last thing, students, if you ever want to talk, um, I'm in a closet. I don't do a lot right now. Um, you can reach out to me on social media. Uh, my Twitter is at Eric Lapata. Uh, my Instagram's at Eric Lapata. I'm on Facebook. Many of you aren't, but I'm there. Um, and then if you ever want my phone number, my personal cell phone number, reach out to Ken. You can have it. We can text, call me. Um, but I would love just to chat with you anytime, even if it's about dumb things like football or things that don't matter in life or things that matter if you ever deal with depression anxiety like i have divorce um doubt following jesus all those things um i'm here for you so reach out to me that's awesome man thank you so much man all right cool. see you all soon right. yeah love you guys bye all right bye everybody welcome to our chapel middle school game of the week it's just me again 
So our game today is just you versus me. And we'll see how well you do. <laughs> Here's our game today. Here's our game, Sudden Death Word Gets, Thanksgiving Edition. So I think what's gonna happen is that there's gonna be a phrase that goes on the screen and it's gonna be whichever one of us guesses first is who is gonna win. So I have not seen these, um, so let's try it out and we'll see who wins. This is like Wheel of Fortune, I guess. Something, you know, gamer. Oh, I erase it? No. Oh, I know I'm catching football. Catching football. Watching football games. Did you beat me? Or did I beat you? All right, watching football games. I have no idea who's in ink. So I'm just gonna have to trust that you are beating me. All right, watching football games. All right, let's go with number two. Hmm. Something ing. And these are all Thanksgiving. These all have to do with Thanksgiving. Hmm. Changing your gousling. Count. Oh, I know what this one is. I'll let you have it. You know what yet? Counting your blessings. All right, I gave you that one. So certainly you have to be on the board now, right? Okay, we're tied, I hope. Or at least you're winning. Maybe you're totally winning 2-0. Hmm, that's a long one. Something the, I bet that one word is the. Oh, no. Mm. Whoa. Thanksgiving Day Parade. Thanksgiving Day Parade. Come on. I had to beat you that time, right? You guys watch that? Is that a thing for you guys? We like to watch it. Well, we don't have cables, so it's a little... A little janky. <laughs> no idea. Something trail, carrying trail figures. Hmm. Talking, taking. Oh, you probably already got it. I bet you got it before me. Taking family pictures. I bet you got that one. Next nice job. Family. I'm, I'm guessing that's family. Nope, not family. Something ing. Oh! I know. Oh, no. I was going to say peeling potatoes, but that's not right. Oh! <laughs> Get it? We eating leftovers. Eating leftovers. You probably beat me on that one. I thought it was peeling potatoes. Hmm. 
Trampoline. Duck. Icing. Trampoline. No. Um, choking. Rock. Mm. Oh! Black Friday shopping. Did you get it? Did you beat me? Or did I beat you? Black Friday shopping. Oh, yeah. Next one. Mm, this should be easy. It's very short. Third feelings. Your relatives, you're probably winning this game. <clears throat> our something, our in our of cutting out of. I have no idea what that word is. Out of... Oh, I know what this one is. I bet you do too. Nice. Yeah. All right, you're keeping score. I don't even know how many I have. Maybe three? All right, no mercy this time. Something the, something the, oh no, something and. And. Threat and rushing. No. Thousand Island dressing. Train, turkey and dressing, turkey and dressing. Does that mean we're tied up? Last one. Last one. This one's for 5,000 points. So whoever gets this one. Thanksgiving. No, it's not the word. Pencil. No. Something. Hmm. Christmas caroling. No. Friendship liners. Friendshipping planters. Friends giving. Friends giving dinner? I don't even think that's a real word. Oh man, that was. Well, uh, you were going to lose to me at some point. How'd you do? Did you beat me? I bet you did. You probably did. Although Friendsgiving dinner, I definitely got that one. I, is that like where you eat your friends or just have your friends over? Is it a special dinner just for you and your buddies? Whatever it is, I hope you invite me to your Friendsgiving dinner. <laughs> Hey there, I'm Pastor Jay Halley. Christmas is coming. For about six years, the chapel has distributed a Christmas gift catalog. This year, of course, we're doing it by video for obvious reasons. And in just a moment, I wanna share with you what the gift options are. Our small adopted village of Buganyuzi in Burundi is not exempt from COVID. We want to provide family kits, which include sanitizer, boxes of soap, and food to help them through this time. For years, the chapel has been part of a ministry in Southeast India. This ministry provides training for pastors who come from around the nation, and they need help getting there, and they need help with food and lodging. 
Dayspring Outreach Ministries in Mexico just completed an orphanage. What they need is a security enclosure to keep the children safe. In Cuba, we are partnered with a ministry called Filter of Hope. They are helping people get clean water and also helping them understand Jesus, our living water. This is our last global gift option, Operation Christmas Child. Every year the chapel partners with OCC and we send these boxes around the world. A lot of people can't get out and shop because of COVID. We have someone who is willing to do the shopping for you. Let's talk about Closer to Home. In Norwalk, a partner we've had for many years, Abigail Pregnancy Services, has a need for specialized baby formula. Over in Port Clinton, Lighthouse Sober Living provides some shelter for those who are recovering. We want to help provide shelter for one night and for some food. Recently, several of us were at the Nehemiah Center in downtown Sandusky watching the kids engaged in this beautiful after-school program. One of the obvious needs is school supplies, and we want to help. One of my favorite quotes is, just because you can't do everything doesn't mean you can't do something. What is your something? Just go to the website mentioned here and you'll find everything you need to know, including how to give on behalf of someone. Thank you for watching and thank you for sending joy to the world. Have you ever seen an iceberg before? If you've seen an iceberg, it's probably with uh, the story of the Titanic. Of course, the Titanic runs into this iceberg and sadly it sinks. But what's so interesting about an iceberg is that when you see the iceberg, it looks like it's massive. But most of the mass of the iceberg is actually underneath the water. In fact, I want you to guess for a moment how much of the iceberg, what percentage do you think is underneath the water? Take a second. All right, do you have your answer? Now, if I were guessing, I would have guessed 50%. It's more. 70%? It's more. 80%? No, it's 90%. 90% of an iceberg is underneath. So what you see is part, but there's so much more underneath the surface. And that is true in our lives. We see certain things about people, but the majority of who they are is underneath the surface. Who they are underneath the surface, yes, it comes out and you can see it on the surface, but there's so much more to people's story. And what I love is this, everybody, has this kind of story or what we'll say throughout our time is a backstory. People have things in their lives that we can't see. Experiences, fears, worries, struggles, dreams, all of these things are happening underneath of the surface of their life. So what we see isn't truly the whole picture. And you know this as well. You and I, we have backstories. And when people see us, it's not truly all that we are. All that we are is there, but they don't always see that. For instance, maybe for you, you, you get angry and you yell at your sibling or yell at your mom or dad, and they just see you as angry. But underneath the surface, your backstory is that you're angry because there's a situation going on at school and no one really sees it, but you do. Or maybe recently uh, you didn't get your homework done. All of us have done that, of course, right? And your teacher maybe thinks on the surface you look lazy. But underneath the surface, your backstory, what people can't see, is that you had an argument with your parents. And that really prevented you from doing the work. Or whatever situation it is, uh, maybe you're in a friendship 
and you are not texting your friend back and they're like, dude, what's going on? And what they don't know is you're struggling with depression and it's hard to do anything right now. You see, all of us have a backstory. We see certain things about people, but for most of us, just like an iceberg, it's underneath the surface. And what I'm grateful for is not only do we have this backstory, but sometimes we're afraid that we're not gonna be accepted for it. Or people in your life feel like, man, if they really knew me, if they knew what was underneath the surface, I don't even know if they would love me. There's a guy named Zacchaeus, one of my favorite guys in scripture. And he is a tax collector. And a tax collector really is someone who rips people off, who hurts people, who do things to take away money from them, so to speak. Zacchaeus is one of those guys who you and I, if he was in our lives, we would be so angry at him. I mean, imagine if someone took your money or ripped you off or stole something from you. You wouldn't want anything to do with him. And Zacchaeus was that kind of guy. He lived this lifestyle, but he also knew what people really thought of him. And so one day he gets tired of living this way and he knows Jesus is coming. And so what he does is he climbs up a tree. Now there are thousands of people probably at this gathering and Jesus is coming through and Zacchaeus is probably thinking, he's not gonna see me with all of these people. And yet Zacchaeus is noticed by Jesus. Not only is Zacchaeus noticed by Jesus, but Jesus tells Zacchaeus to come down from this tree. And not only does he tell him to come down from the tree and want to have a conversation with him, Jesus takes it a step further. And it's the two verses that I want us to read today. Here's what it says. It says, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. So that's great. We already established that. But then he says this, I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. It's one thing if Jesus was like, hey, come down and have a conversation. But he says, not only do I want you to come down, I want to go to your house. Why would Jesus want to do that? Well, he doesn't want to know about, G uh, about Zacchaeus. He wants to get to know Zacchaeus. Because Jesus knows that Zacchaeus, on the surface, is a tax collector. He knows on the surface that he rips people off. He knows on the surface that everybody thinks poorly of him. But what's so amazing is that even though Jesus knows this, he wants to get to his backstory. He wants to get to what's underneath the surface. He wants to get to the heart of who Zacchaeus is. And what I love about that is that Zacchaeus is so important to Jesus that Jesus would spend time with him. Jesus wanted to get to know Zacchaeus and all the junk, everything that's underneath the surface. What I love about that story personally is for me, I'm a pastor and a lot of people think, well, man, Eric, you must have it all together. And I don't. And there are so many things that I have underneath the surface. And sometimes I'm afraid of what other people are gonna think of me. There's no doubt about it. But there's other times where I'm like, look, if Jesus really knew what was underneath the surface of my life, he wouldn't love me. And Zacchaeus probably felt the same way. But what happens is Jesus goes to Zacchaeus' home, not to just have dinner, but when we're at our home, we get to really know the person. And Jesus says to me, Eric, I just wanna hang out with you. I know what's on the surface, but I wanna to get to know what's even at the depth of who you are, what's underneath the surface. I wanna know your story. Because when I get to know it, I'm gonna love you even more. And Zacchaeus, he found that out. And he knew how much Jesus loved him. And middle school students, I wanna tell you, I know you have a backstory. I know there's things underneath the surface that you're hiding from people. And you're probably hiding from God because you don't know if you'll be accepted for it. Zacchaeus felt the same way. I feel the same way. But what's amazing is Jesus just wants to come over to your house, literally wants to come into your life and get to know the true you. And when he gets to know the true you, what he's going to tell you is, I love you. 
He's not going to say, why did you do that? Why are you becoming this? Or why are those things in your mind or in your heart? He's going to say, I know who you are and I accept you and I love you no matter what's underneath the surface, no matter what your backstory is. So what does this mean for you and I? First of all, what it means is, again, Jesus wants to know your story. He wants to accept you right where you're at. And that is so life changing. But students, there are a lot of people in your life, kids in your class, kids on your team, even the people in your home that need to feel God's love as well, that need to be accepted for who they are. Not just the 10% that's on the surface, but the 90% underneath the surface because they feel rejected. They don't feel accepted. They need someone that's going to get to know them and walk away thinking, man, that person accepts me and loves me. You and I get to do that for those people in our lives. And when we do that, what we're saying is not only do I love you, but God loves you. Every person that you interact with, they're going to project somebody. It's going to be 10% of who they are, but the rest of the 90% is going to be underneath the surface and you and I get to accept them right where they're at and help them seek God's love. So I want to just take some time to pray for you. And then I so want to just say before I do that, thank you for letting me be in your homes and be in uh, the student center with you today. I love you guys and I'm so honored uh, to be a part of your journey from far away. Let me pray for you. So Father, um, I just pray for a middle school student that's here today who is worried about being accepted for who they are. Jesus, you interact with their story. You see everything underneath the surface and what you're saying is, I love you anyways. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He did bad things and Jesus still went into his home and in his life. You want to do the same thing for us. And most importantly, Jesus, help us to give that back to the people in our lives, whether they're at the same lunch table as us or they're on social media or on our sports team or in our band or whatever it is, would you help us accept people for who they are? God, just as you accept us. We pray this in your name. Amen. Love you guys and thank you so much and looking forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Hey, all right, does it get better than Pastor Eric Lapata? Man, so great. Thank you, Pastor Eric, for your words uh, from Zacchaeus and man, about God knowing our backstory. That is awesome. Hey, hope you guys have a wonderful week this week and uh, hopefully we'll see you next week.